Grand Risings and Grand AM2 Libras, this is your girl, bringing you an immediate dream update. I'm going to do my best to be as concise and as short as possible to keep the imprint of this dream upon my mind as I explain it to you. So without further ado, please do remember to only take the messages that vibrate. If it's not what rings true for you, Libras, then most likely it's not what it do. And I know that you can't see the counter, but it's there. Or well, it's not. It is. Anywho, leave it if it doesn't fit. And so in this dream, Libras, I had just done a comedy performance. And this wasn't that a comedy club this was more it was like a theater it looked like something where a, a play might be performed but it was a theater <laughs> but it's like this theater was connected to a hotel it definitely wasn't like a convention center it was a theater and so after I got off stage, I was like coming down the stage backstage and I saw someone that I knew. Now, I'm not sure who whom this was, but whomever it was said happy born day. So your birthday could be significant. Someone might have told you something or someone is coming to tell you something around your birthday. I know Libra season's a bit off, but <laughs> it's really not. It's really right around the corner. Keep calm. It's almost Libra season. So I told this person, like, I didn't celebrate my born day anymore. And right then, I think I saw my mother come around the corner. And I'm, I, I can't. I remember what she had in her hand. I don't know if it was a camera or a cupcake with a single candle. And I know that's like two totally different things not to know which one it was. But it was one of the two. Again, I'm trying to keep the imprint fresh. So she comes around the corner and I see her walking towards me. And I'm like, yep, nope, got, got to go. And so <laughs> I started like running down this hallway now i don't fear my mother i've already worked on those issues but this just i just wasn't gonna do it i just wasn't going to involve myself in unnecessary drama and even in the dream state <laughs> i'm like yeah no i ain't got time so <laughs> i started running down this hallway and that's when i ended up in like this huge kitchen and, like, I see there were other people that I knew, like family members and friends. I saw somebody else when I got to the kitchen. And they're like, where are you going? You know, we're, we're about to do this surprise. <laughs> In my mind, I'm like, why are you breaking the surprise? But I'm like, yeah, no, I'm out. And so this Hispanic dude who came running into the kitchen from a different direction. I don't know what the fuck he was running from, but I told him, you know, you should go that way because some people were coming from another direction. And I was like, go that way, go that way. So he took off running in the direction I told him to go running. And whomever was chasing him was coming my way. And then I took off running in the same direction that he took off running. And then that's how I ended up in like the hotel. It's weird, it's strange. I, I, I'm explaining the dream and then we'll break it down. So when I get to the hotel, like I'm running down, cause you know how hotels that, you know, they, they have long back hallways and stuff and you know, they call it back of the house. So I'm in the back of the house in one of these damn hallways and then I make it into like the common area, the common space of the hotel. And then I get outside and that was like that dream. And then when I, when I get outside the hotel, then I'm going inside of an apartment. When I open up the door to the apartment, I notice that this apartment looks familiar 
as in I've been in it before. And the first thing I noticed was that all of the furniture was rearranged. Even though I had been in this apartment before and the furniture was rearranged, I was noticing it looked like one of the bedrooms was missing. <laughs> and I know that's weird to say, but I'm just telling you, okay, you know, apartments don't just lose rooms. I mean, I mean, I don't, someone's country, something about someone being from the country or being from the South. <laughs> I'm getting downloads as I'm giving the dream intel anyways. Shit is weird. So, where was I? Okay, so it, I, I'm noticing that one of the rooms is missing. Like, there should be another room, but one of the rooms is missing. I'm like, oh, okay, so, you know, they moved that over here, and they moved this over here. and But I knew whose house it was when I walked in because I saw the people who were in there. The people who were in there, there was my ex's two kids, her two biological kids when I was with my last current ex. She, quote unquote, adopted a child while we were separated at one point in our relationship. I'm not going to go too far in that, into that, but anywho, so this child was missing, okay? The, the adopted child was missing. Her two biological children were in the apartment with some friends. And so I walk in and I see that the furniture has been arranged. One of the bedrooms appears to be missing because there's only two. It looks like my ex's bedroom and her son's bedroom. So I open the door and when we separated, he was a teenager. He's, you know now an adult <laughs> um or he will be next year so i'm not sure if he's currently living with her the dream is telling me so and so i would have to guess that her older daughter was not living with her or with them because there was only my ex's bedroom and her son's bedroom, but her elder daughter was there, so she must have been visiting, because again, there were friends in the apartment. When I opened the door, I think there was one friend in her son's bedroom, but then there were like two boys in the living room with her daughter. So when I come in, I went to his room and I opened the door and he's sitting on a couch in his room with his friend. I can't remember what I asked him. Something about his age or something. Oh, I remarked something to the effect of like, you know, you're <laughs> you're going to be like, like a man now. And so I go in my ex's room and there's like shit everywhere. There's clothes all over the floor. There's clothes all over the bed. There's just shit just all over the fucking room. <laughs> And so even though there's a mess, I don't know if it, it looked like in her room, she was a hoarder. It looked like a hoarder lived in her room. I'm telling you, there was literally just shit everywhere. Now, in life, she was not like that. I don't know. She may be like that now. But I'm noticing in the midst of all the shit that was hoarded in her room... <laughs> I see some shit that belongs to me. And she wasn't home, mind you. Don't ask me why I was there and the kids were there and, and I'm there. But I see some shit that belongs to me and I'm like, oh, since she's not here, I'm about to get my shit. I was like, matter of fact, let me up and get all my shit that I left before she get home. And so I'm picking up, I had picked up like two pairs of shorts. And this could be significant to someone my bathrobe, I had a favorite bathrobe, and it was, like, run down. It had been run down when the pockets was fucked up. It had a hole in it so that if you put something in the pocket, it fell through, like, the bathrobe. <laughs> so the um, the belt to the bathrobe was on the floor 
and it was separate from the bathrobe because my bathrobe belt is the first thing that I picked up because I noticed it because my bathrobe was teal. Um, I should note that this isn't... Um, this wasn't a bathrobe that I had when I was with her. I should say that. So I, I don't know how it ended up in her house. But anyways... And so I was pissed. <laughs> so after I picked up these two pairs of shorts and I'm like looking over on the floor, uh, I'm telling you, there's like shit stacked up on like it was a sea of shit on the floor in there. So I see my bathrobe belt on the floor because it was teal. <laughs> so I pick it up and then I'm pissed off like, what the fuck? My, my bathrobe's here too. And then I see my bathrobe. So I pick it up and I'm like, I'm not in my mind. I said to myself, I'm not leaving this here. I'm like... You know, I, I probably won't even wear it because it's been here and it's been in all of this shit. And I was like, but fuck it. You know, it's mine. Like it meant a lot to me at one point in time. I think I had this bathrobe when, when I was uh, a teenager, by the way. I'm pretty sure that's the time frame. Wasn't was years 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 away from being an adult and running into her is when I had this bathrobe. But anyways, so I'm heading back out the door. I think I was going to the car to put the shit that I had in my hand, especially this bathrobe, this this sentimental thing that I actually cared about more so than any of the shit that I had picked up. I'm walking out the door. And some weird, crazy white dude comes in and then her daughter and some other people come in the house. They kind of like bum rush, like I'm getting ready to walk out of the door and they're coming in the door. And, you know, they're like pushing past me coming in the house all fast and shit and I'm just like thinking like what the fuck who are they <laughs> but I had this stuff in my hand so I'm like whatever and then I turn around and this dude had went in the bathroom and then something happened he came out and he was naked and he was screaming and I'm like looking like like what the fuck I'm like you know what I gotta go I gotta get out of here I was like you know what let me get my shit and get out of here so I guess I went to the car because there there was some weird gap it was like I the shit disappeared out of my hand <laughs> and it's like I went to the car and came back but I don't think I went to the car and came back but there was no shit in my hands the shit that I had just had in my hands wasn't in my hands and the next thing I know I'm turning around and the son and the daughter and all the friends are standing in the kitchen. And they're asking me for help. Can you help us with the dude in the bathroom? And I'm like, what the fuck is with the dude in the bathroom? I didn't say those words, but I, I asked them, like, what's, what's with the dude in the bathroom? And they were like, we need your help. Then the daughter went out the door and came back in the door. There were two... Well, let me see. There were like two security guards. These were two Caucasian security guards. Here's where it gets weird. And then there's these two Hispanic or Latin men and a police officer, a Caucasian police officer. So they come bum rushing in the house and then I'm looking at the kids. They're in the kitchen. <laughs> like, there's a difference in flooring in between the living room and the kitchen. The kitchen has, like, um, not hardwood, but, like, linoleum or something. So you could, like, step off the carpet <laughs> in the living room just onto the hard floor into the kitchen. There's no, you know, no step down or anything. It's just a difference in flooring. And I, <laughs> I'm explaining this because it makes a difference. So I'm standing on the carpet in the living room. You know, there's that 
separation of flooring or the change in flooring. So the kids like take one step <laughs> to the right and they all step into the kitchen. They turned around and opened the fridge. The daughter, the son, and their friends, like they were looking for something in the refrigerator, like this man wasn't naked and going crazy in the fucking bathroom. <laughs> So I'm like, what the fuck? And then the two Mexican guys that came in the door behind the officer went into the bedrooms and closed the door. And I'm like, well, where the fuck are they going? (laughs) What's the police and the security guards about to do? This is when the dream ended. (sighs) That was a lot. I'm going to try and keep this short. I say all of this to say and I bring this intel from the dream state to you one to say your family may be planning something around your born day Libra some type of surprise something that they feel would be a surprise to you But it's not a surprise that would make you happy. This is something that you would walk away from or you would turn down or you would just wholeheartedly reject. And I don't feel like you would reject whatever this surprise is because I feel like it's they feel it would be good, but you wouldn't like whatever this surprise is, it would benefit them. It certainly would upset you. So, again, I don't think that you would reject this or turn this down or turn away this family member or these family members or these individuals from your past out of fear. I think you're doing it out of self-preservation, which is what I was doing in the dream. I just wasn't going to be laden with drama, and I knew that's what they were bringing. They were trying to bring me some bullshit under the surprise of a surprise birthday. No, it wasn't going to be a present. (laughs) And so I think this has something to do with your gifts. A lot of you are psychic. A lot of you have prophetic dreams as well. A lot of you are mediums. You can communicate with beings from other dimensions. You're a starseed. You're an indigo. (laughs) You're not from around here. And I think your family was trying to surprise you because you're on the world stage. See, I haven't performed comedy. Matter of fact, the last time I performed comedy was April of 2016. And that's because some very tumultuous things were going on in my life at the time, legal affairs, and I wasn't sure if I was going to have the bandwidth, the wherewithal to follow my comedy career and so there was some other mitigating factors but again uh, another time another place so because I was just getting off the stage because I was performing in a large venue this venue is larger than any venue I actually performed in in my waking life so to me this feels like the world stage Your family doesn't want you to utilize your gifts to benefit the world, humanity. They don't want you to be seen. They don't want you to be celebrated. They don't want you to be on the world stage. And they may be trying to cook something up. And your mother could be involved, other family members, again, individuals from your past co-workers, ex-friends, ex-best friends, ex-lovers, people that were only on an acquaintance level. There's a lot of envy. There's a lot of jealousy. There's a lot of selfishness. 
not wanting you to succeed. A lot of people have been projecting negative energy towards you, Libra. They're projecting a fear of success upon you because these people have been watching you. Because whoever these family members, these people from your past, oh, they were in the audience. They were laughing and chucking and yucking it up. And I didn't see them in the audience from the stage. That's not even the point in the dream where I started. But I knew that they were there. Because they came out of the woodwork <laughs> to somehow find me backstage to let me know that they were about to surprise me for my born day. They don't want you to celebrate your gifts. And they don't want you to be celebrated. So they may be trying to cook up some shit again around your birthday. Or this could be soon. Whatever your whatever day of the month your birthday falls on, Libras. So it may not be around your born day. It may be around the day of the month your born day falls on. So this could be significant to August. And may I just say happy Lionsgate to all of you. Again, the Lionsgate began, I believe, uh, what was yesterday? Saturday? Friday, the 27th. These individuals, these past people, know that you are indeed supposed to be on the world stage. You've almost been ordained to be by the Most High. You're meant to be effective. You're meant to affect a lot of people. Because you were sent here to be of assistance, to be of service. These people know it. Some of them didn't know it, but more than a lot of them know it now. They want to put a stop to it. So they might try and pull some shock and awe BS around the date. Or the day of your birth in August. They want you to come down off that stage. <laughs> they want you to know to not go back to that stage because I've not been back on stage since 2016. They want you to not follow your heart's desires. They want you to not follow the Most High's plan. That's <laughs> what they want you to do. Because they know that you will rock that stage as you were meant to. Now, this ex, I'm getting two things. Well, I'm getting three things. There's three ways that I could look at this because everyone, of course, is in a different situation. But this is what I'm getting from the dream breakdown is that with the ex situation, if you are male, Your ex may have gotten herself involved with a very wily man. Someone who's just out here wilding. Someone who may have some type of psychological imbalance. I'm hearing not well-rooted. So someone's not playing with a full deck. Someone doesn't quite have all their marbles. And this is who your ex got involved with. Your ex wants you to come save them from this, I just heard, natural disaster. This natural disaster of a relationship that they've involved themselves in. 
And if this ex has children, your ex's children may want you to come back and be around them or be in their lives or save them from this situation because the person that your ex is with is very volatile. They're very unstable. They're standing on shaky grounds. Like they're having some type of extreme emotional outburst. And even though I was there, don't know why I was there, but because I was there, I decided, let me go ahead and take a moment and get all my shit that I left. When I left, because I left a lot of stuff there and I had to resolve within myself to be okay with what the fuck I left. Um, so it's like the kids are looking to you, even though they went outside to... I guess, get security from the complex and to get an officer, an actual police officer involved. And these two, these, these two Mexican dudes, these two Latinos, they could be Mexican, these two Hispanic dudes. They look like some real OGs. <laughs> Let me just say that. I'm not even kidding. They look like some real OGs. And I was just like, okay. And I was wondering why they went there. Like they came in the house, like Danger was in the bathroom and they came in the house, walked past me, <laughs> walked past the kids, walked through the kitchen, opened both of the doors to the bedrooms at the same time, walked in, closed the doors behind them. And that's when the kids turned around. They, they, uh, the kids and their friends each took one step. <laughs> it's like they were doing a gosh damn dance because they almost did it in unison. They took one step off the carpet into the kitchen on the hard floor, moved that other foot. They were standing in the kitchen. Then they turned around and they opened the refrigerator door and they were all looking in there. Every single one of them. I think I think there were three friends there. Again, two with the daughter, one with the son. So it's like they're looking in the refrigerator like a snack time, but danger, again, is in the bathroom. So these two OGs are just in the bedrooms. I, I don't know. I guess the two security guards and the police officer went to go handle the crazy man in the bathroom. But it's like even though the kids went outside to get two security guards and a police officer and two <laughs> OG gangster looking Hispanic, Latino, or Mexican gentlemen. It's like they were still looking at me like, you gonna handle the crazy ass man in the bathroom? So I don't... So even though the children could ask for outside assistance or someone who would more readily be able to handle the situation at bay. It's like they were still looking at me to resolve the issue. Again, my ex was not there. So crazy man is just in the bathroom, just screaming and shit, naked. <laughs> I'm trying to get the hell out of Dodge. <laughs> I did my best to form a relationship with my ex's children in the time that I was with her. She added a lot of stressors on those relationships. And, you know, kids don't really like the whole, you know, this is my mom's new boyfriend or this is my mom's new girlfriend. They're just not, they're not with all of that. You know, nobody wants some new adult person. <laughs> you know, telling them what to do and moving in and just all kinds of crazy stuff. And so, you know, I did my best and, you know, I took care of the house, took care of the household, took care of them and just never got the respect and just, you know, it is what it is. It was a learning experience. I'm not mad. I'm grateful and I'm a better woman for it. But again, uh, both of these children are adults now. 
I mean, time time has passed. Time has gone by. These children are adults now. And so it's like, okay, so your mom ended up with some crazy ass person that has weird flash outs and volatile emotional eruptions. <laughs> I mean, to lose your shit to the point where you strip down naked and you just in the house screaming in the bathroom and tearing shit up to the point where the police need to be involved. Something is really wrong with this individual. Something is seriously wrong with this connection. Again, I'm I'm not involved, though. (laughs) In fact, I'm very far removed. And yet somehow or another, (laughs) after me having just performed a comedy show after having not been on the big stage in a long time, my family popping up in the audience like, surprise, we got a surprise party for you. No, no, you don't. <laughs> I'm out. I'm leaving. I'm, I'm good. No, thank you. To getting to my ex's house where apparently there's a older, scraggly, Caucasian man who's naked in the bathroom and screaming and having a real serious issue. And her children are looking at me like, fuck the police, fuck these OG gangsters, fuck the apartment security. We looking at you to resolve this issue. And it's crazy because they weren't looking at me, but they were looking at me. And then they thought that they, I don't know, I'm not sure what's up with the refrigerator, like why they were all looking in the refrigerator. I guess because they were all hungry. They were looking to be fed. They need some nourishment, some kind of sustenance. So it's like the ex's partner, the crazy Caucasian screaming in the bathroom wasn't being our provider. It's like he wasn't bringing any sustenance, any nourishment into the connection And so, because this person is so gosh damn crazy and off their fucking rocker and volatile, abusive, violent, unpredictable, even though they necessarily like me, (laughs) it's like, well, we'd rather fucking have you back because at least you used to handle shit. Because I did. And I'm not bragging on myself because <laughs> I'm, I'm too humble. But it's to say that I took care of shit. I mean, I made sacrifices for those kids. We're not going to speak about them now because it's just not necessary. But I sacrificed for them. Like they were my own flesh and blood. Like they literally came out of me. When I was with my ex, I treated those kids like they were my children, and I spoke of them as such. So it's interesting (laughs) that even though they didn't respect me, and they showed it, and she allowed them to. um, That they would want me... (laughs) Bypassing the police, who, who, by the way, came into the apartment with his gun drawn. <laughs> Bypa- bypass the Mexican or the Latino or the Hispanic OGs, the, the original, the original gangsters. They came in like some original gangsters. They were dressed like it. They moved like it. Bypass the apartment security, they weren't going to get it. No, they were looking at me. Because after everyone bum rushed into the apartment, heading towards the bathroom, the OGs headed towards the bedroom, like, I, we ain't got shit to do with this. But they didn't live there. <laughs> the security guards were standing in the living room by the front door. At first, after the um, officer went running towards the bathroom, and then I don't know what happened. Again, I turned to the right. The kids were doing their little line dance shuffle into the kitchen, just one step, (laughs) and then opening the refrigerator and standing there looking, all of them, the friends do. 
Like, like, what's in here? What are we going to eat? But they were looking at me. Like I was going to fill the fridge. Like I was going to take care of crazy man in the bathroom. So I feel like your ex and this ex may have had children. This ex may not have had children. Has gotten themselves involved with a very volatile person. Someone who flashes out. Someone who's violent. Someone who's abusive. And this is what's being exposed. Is the fact that your ex may have gotten themselves involved with a real nut job. Now, they may not necessarily tell you that they want you to come back so that they can get out of a volatile situation. But it's like their kids, their kids would want to tell you, even though these are adult children now. These kids would want to tell you (laughs) that their mother or their father is in a very volatile situation. And even though, you know, we ain't necessarily like you. I mean, you did take care of shit. <laughs> we had shit when you was around. So Libras, somebody out there, a lot of people out there, a lot of people out there still want your feeling energy. They want your assertive action whether you are female or male someone likes the way that you handle business and some other people don't like the way that you handle business do you see the conundrum and the energies it's like people like you for certain shit then they absolutely hate you for certain shit but they want you to come back around even though they they don't really want you to be around and this is just a whole clusterfuck of confuckery i'm not confused i'm pretty sure that you're not either It's these people who are confused. It's these people who are in real fucked up karmic life situations. And they want you to come back and repeat. They want you to come back and be Bob the Builder. Or Bobette the Builder. Upon their life. Because they know that you do construction. (laughs) Libra, they know that you build so well. And all of a sudden, because their life is in dis array because they're under construction and they know that you do construction you do reconstruction you do new construction you do old construction you do all sorts of construction you can build on top of ruins and still make a skyscraper Libra it's all kinds of shit that's going to go down this weekend with this full moon approaching on the first. This is the second of three super moons or two. Last month's uh, full moon. Well, this month, it's still July. <laughs> this month's full moon was a super moon. This moon is going to be a super moon as well. If I'm not mistaken, the third full moon, which there will be two full moons in August. There will also be one at the end of the month. If I'm not mistaken, I think that moon is also a a super moon. But last month, or this month, the full moon on the third, I believe, and this full moon coming up on Tuesday, they're both blue moons. And of course, Lionsgate is on the 8th. So, or when the portal is most potent. So there's a lot of planetary things going on right now. And because you've gone through a new shift and you've shifted into a new timeline, a new energy, people are trying to figure out how to configure the planets. Even as I'm saying this, and and they're giving me this intel, (laughs) people are funny. I'm just going to say that. People are real funny. Go ahead. Try and move the planets around so you can reconfigure some shit so you can try and reconstruct the timeline to to put Libra back in a certain energy so you can make them do what you want them to do. It's just not going to happen, ma'am and or sir and i use those terms very loosely because i know that you're an empty vessel 
especially if you're up to the tactics and maneuvers that you're utilizing to garner Libra's attention to call for fucking help. You can't do it in the physical. Obviously, you must not have Libra's new number. Or maybe you still have Libra's same number and Libra has blocked you, blocked you out of their life, blocked you out of their org field for good reason. It's not because Libra's running, it's because you're toxic and you refuse. You refuse. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because as I was slurring that, I heard refuel in my own slur, in my own words. So people are pissed off that you're just not refueling them anymore. They can't steal your energy. They can't manifest off of the energy that you emit since you cut them the fuck off. Again, there are a lot of people suffering some very karmic real life situations right now. And although they may not necessarily want to utter the words to ask for help, they're going to try and by hook or by crook is what I'm getting. They're going to try and get the help, the assistance, the guidance they need by hook or by crook. If you won't give it to them directly, then they'll try and siphon it from you indirectly by trying to do some weird shit by having you fix some shit in the dream state, hoping because some of these people have been studying spirituality because they've been trying to come after you. So they've had to learn some new things that maybe they didn't necessarily want to learn or they didn't think they needed to know. But they think they need to know this shit now so that they can figure out how now, brown cow, who jumped over the moon. <laughs> that would be you, Libra. You've escaped the doom. You've escaped the toxicity because you've healed. And again, because you know how to construct, because you know construction. Someone needs your help to build a bear, <laughs> to build themselves back up again. Libras, know that you are protected. Know that the guidance, the assistance, the vision that you were given to disassociate yourselves from certain individuals, certain parties, certain locations, certain events, certain occurrences was right on the money. When in doubt, don't. These people have really fucked up energy. They keep trying to bend the rules or figure out a new rule or figure out a workaround or work through. To get you to do what the fuck they want you to do. Because you're just so rooted in yourself fully, firmly, that they cannot uproot you. They cannot move you. You're immovable. And the Most High is unstoppable. And since it is the Most High who put you on this world stage, who but whom should take you off? Not these individuals. No one asked them to come to the show. <laughs> Even though some of them are paying to watch Libra, some of these people are paying to watch you. So you may have um, some type of service or you may be on social media or you may have um, a products or services that you may sell. Oh, yeah. Some of them have paid to play Libra. They have because they're trying to stay in your fucking energy. Anything they can fucking do. To keep an eye on you. They will. They have. But their plan is to kill. To destroy. Because see, they, they just want your goodness. They just want your help. They just want your assistance to fix the shit they need to fix. And then they'll discard you. So be careful of these empty vessels coming back towards you, Libra, in this season. Because even if you weren't fully aware yet, you smell like money. You look like money. You're glowing like money. And I don't just mean the paper good. I mean wealth. I'm talking about being rich. I'm talking about wealth. You smell like it. You look like it. You glow like it. You move like it. You're emitting it. 
The Most High knows the ordered steps. You just have to step upon them like you have been. And it's these individuals, it's these energies, it's these entities that want to take you off the steps to the stage, the world stage, that the Most High has invited you upon because you were ordained to be there. You were ordained to have an audience. You were ordained to use your throat chakra to heal, assist, assist and be of service to others. This is your birthright. Your family members think they got a trick up their sleeve, but a gosh damn surprise <laughs> that they're going to drop on you or pop up on you with to make sure that you never walk those steps up the stairs to that stage again. Again, it's not up to them. Neighbors, please do continue to utilize your own intuition and discernment to make the very best decisions for your highest good. I know that you will. I'm cheering for you. I love you. Any and all pertinent information to this reading can and will be listed right down below in the description box. Libras, thank you for your presence, your energy, your vibe, your likes, your shares, your subscribes, your contributions, your comments. They are all integral parts of this channel. And they do help this channel to grow. So thank you to all of you for sharing these videos so that other lovely Libras such as yourselves or not Libras may indeed see these messages as well. United we stand, together we rise. I'll let you grow. Peace.